Alright, so to start off, uh, I'll just draw a picture. And uh, this will be an Erlenmeyer flask, and this will be a burette. Okay? So let's say, uh, instead of thinking about it abstractly, let's think about it as Legos. So we have three blue Legos, right? And then we have a bunch of red Legos. And let's say the red Legos, the red Legos are a strong base, and the blue Legos are a weak acid. Okay, so the blue Legos are a weak acid. Weak acid. Okay, so if I asked you what was the pH in the concentration uh, what was the pH in this Erlenmeyer flask? It would be around 4, right? Because it's a weak acid. So I'll just draw a pH scale. 14 and 0. So it'll be around here. Okay? So that makes sense, right? Because, like, weak acid, since it's a weak acid, um, it won't be really low. It won't be, like, 1, but it'll be around 4. Um, so... If this right now there's nothing in the solution except weak acid, so it's gonna be four. So if I if I dropped a red Lego, right? Uh, if I dropped a base, if I dropped a red Lego, it would it would combine it would combine with this um, acid, and it would reduce it would reduce the amount of um, it would reduce the amount of acid, right? So if it reduce if it reduces the amount of acid, then the pH is going to go up. Because the pH goes down as you add acid. So if you decrease acid, it's going to go up. Because you're, you, the red Lego just combined with that acid. So let's say I add another, I add an, added another one, a base. So this one is going to combine with this Lego, right? If these two Legos combine, now you reduced the... Um, acid concentration even more so the pH is going to go up again and if you had um, if you had a graph right it would start out at 4 and it, you're, you'd be slowly increasing it right is you're decreasing the amount of acid and then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna add the, the final red Lego and if once this the third Lego is added it's going to combine with the last acid, and now it's completely neutral, right? Because the acid and the base have completely neutralized each other. So in this graph, it's going to be the equivalence point. It's going to be right here. Um, so the equivalence point, let me write that. The equivalence point is going to be when the moles of... The equivalence point. Equivalence point is when um, the moles of base completely react, completely react with moles of acid. So, since since that's true. Um now what is, what is it going to be? Is it going to be acidic, basic or neutral? Well, it's going to be neutral, right? Because uh the the amount of acid has completely um been neutralized by the base. So this solution overall is going to be neutral. So and that's why the equivalence points are going to be right there. It's going um it's going to be neutral. And it doesn't have to be seven because uh, that's a common mistake too. Is uh, that's it's only seven when it's a strong acid and strong base. So let's say I add one more red, right? If I add one more red, what's going to happen? Well, I just said it's neutral, right? So is it going to be acidic, basic, or neutral now? It's going to be basic because since I added, since there's no more um, blue acid to react with. This red Lego is going, since it represents base, this solution's now going to be basic. So on this curve, on this curve, it's going to keep increasing 
and then it's going to um, become stable. So the more red I add, since there's no more, since there's no more acid, it's just going to keep increasing on this curve. Um, and yeah, that's the that's the overall concept I wanted to show to you. And I hope this Lego example helped because um, I guess I see it as more as less abstract, right? Because uh, the the Legos represent that you're completely uh, binding and therefore reducing the amount of acid, right? So the less acid, um, the higher the pH goes. So that's my explanation of titrations, and I hope that helped.